Hello everyone, it's Trina here from There's a Card for That .ca, and today I'm going to be making this little pet's birthday card for my daughter who is turning 12. Uh, she picked out the stamp set, uh, so she's pretty excited about it. She loves teal and or or not orange. <laughs> I like orange. Uh, she likes teal and green, so that's the colors we're going to be going with. And I'm going to stamp the little girl image, the dog, and the cat, as well as the greeting with Memento Tuxedo Black ink because I am going to be coloring them in with Copic markers. Um, so I'm just going to clean off the stamps and then set them aside to put away later. And so I'm just going to go off camera real quick and cut them out with the Brother 2 Scan and Cut and then I am going to start coloring them in. I'm going to start with her skin and I'm using my typical go-to colors for skin um, starting with E11 and then E30, E50 and R30 for her little cheeks. So I start with my darkest color where I want the shadows to be. So on the bottom side of her arms I'm going to add little little knee details so that her legs don't look like sticks. <laughs> and then I'm going to go in with my E30 and pull that out a bit um, more towards like the center of her face, up more towards the top of her arms and on her legs. And then after that I'm going to go in with my E50 and just blend that all out and give her this super cute little look on for her skin. Uh, I like using these ones. I find I get the best blend. I know there's videos out there where they bring in like BVs for the shadows and I've tried that but she just looks bruised. I need so much more practice when bringing in like the blue violets for shadows <laughs> because it, it did not work out for me at all. Um, I'm just going with the colorless blender there to add or remove a little bit of the skin tone that got out. Uh, for the kitty, the kitty's pretty simple. I'm using R000 for the insides of the ears and the nose, and then W5 and W1 for the kitty itself. He's going to be a little, a little tabby cat. Um, I find this is the easiest cat, whether it's in oranges or in the grays or even black and white, for me to do. Um, I've tried patches. They don't look very good at all. Uh, for her clothing, she's going to be um, in the teals, and her hairbands and shoes are going to match her little dress. Um, the BGs I'm using today are BG13, BG15, and BG23. And I'm going with my, my second darkest here. Um, I use the darkest for her, her little ponytails and her shoes, and I'm just adding a little bit of texture to show that there's actually folds in her dress, um, just where the shadows would meet those wavy lines, and then I'm going to go over the whole dress with my lightest color, the BG23, and just to get a good, a good blend um, from the shadows out to where the light would be more directly hitting her dress. And then I am done. No, I'm not done her. <laughs> she needs hair. Um, my daughter is a dirty blonde, so I'm going with a dirty blonde, the E44, E43, and E42. Here I'm starting with my medium color because I get enthusiastic when it comes to the dark colors in the hair, and so I find it easier to start with my medium color, and then it kind of gives me a guideline of how far not to go with my darkest color. So I'm going to just add a little bit um, where the hair comes together, the ends of the hair by the part at the top. Um, just to give it a little bit of definition, a little bit of low lights. And so the highlights would come out naturally and then blend that out again with the E42. Next, I'm going to be coloring this little kitty, and I'm going to color him exactly the same way as I colored the little kitty that she is holding. Um, 
starting with the W5 for the stripes and then going to the W1 just to color him in. I like a lot of definition for my stripes. We used to have a cat that looked just like this and there was, there was quite a, uh, a, a difference in, in her color tones. Her collar is going to match the girl's dress and then I'm going to be using Y28 for the little bell. Um, you can see that the dog has been colored. I actually don't end up using the dog, so I cut the coloring of him out. Um, if you did want to color the dog, just like you see here, then I just used the E44 and 43 for the ears and tail, and then the 43, 42 for the rest of his fur. Uh, so I'm stamping the greeting here on a piece of the scrap paper that I had used before. And this one is also going to be for this week's MFT sketch challenge. And I will link the sketch challenge below. Um, so here I'm using a piece of the post-it tape just to hold it in place because it was too narrow for me to hold it in place while I cut it. Um, but I didn't want to trust myself with scissors. <laughs> It's like a little kid, right? Don't don't play with the scissors. Um, so our card today is going to be a side fold standard A2 sized card base. So four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm just using a piece of pattern paper for my background. Um, so I'm just using my dollar store tape runner. Still the same tape runner, though it is getting pretty low. So I have to I have to dig out another one and center that on there. And then see here I'm checking. I'm checking because it's not moving very well <laughs> at all, but it was just getting stuck. I mean, it happens, right? So I'm going to line that up where I want it and adhere the sentiment flat to the card base. And then I'm going to pop the little girl up with some foam tape. Again, foam tape right from the dollar store. You find it in like the hardware or the picture section um, for mounting. I, I still I still have no idea why anybody would use mounting tape to mount something to their wall. Like that would just destroy the wall when you try and take it down because the stuff it's not it's not moving. I actually had a couple questions on yesterday's video about the the dollar store tape runner that I use, the regular one. And it is, it's very strong. Um if you try and take paper apart after you've pressed it down, you're gonna rip your paper. Um it's it's a great deal you get eight meters for like a dollar fifty. It's so fantastic. So I'm just going to pop her up over on the side there. And then I was going to use the dog and the kitty here. And I decided I did not, I didn't like those at all. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to pull out some coordinating enamel dots and I use glass and bead slick surface adhesive. I don't know if it's me, I don't know if it's my temperature and my climate here, but the multi-matte medium or multi-medium matte by Ranger, it it doesn't work for me. It stays down, but then after the card has been sitting for like a week or whatever it is, then it doesn't, it doesn't stay down anymore. Um, so I'm going over her dress and her shoes and her little hairbands with some clear Wink of Stella just to give her a little bit of sparkle. Um, my daughter, she likes the glitter. I mean, you can tell she's my kid, right? And then I'm going to use the glossy accents and the applicator tips, still working great. Um, just over her shoes, just to give them a little bit of shine, like that, that, um, Patton, Pantene, no, Pantene's hair shampoo. <laughs> Patton finish. And then that is going to be the outside of the card. Um, I'm going to use the little the little kitty that we had colored earlier on the inside of the card just to add something. I do like to write my own sentiments on the inside for my kids especially. Um, so just a little something to put on the inside. And that is going to be the card for today. Um, so thank you all so much for watching. Um, and thumbs upping and commenting and subscribing. It really means a lot to me. If you haven't done those things, please do them. It's, I can't even tell you how much I appreciate it. I will have links to my blog and my Facebook post and the 
MFT's sketch challenge down below. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye.